The niqab, a full-face veil leaving just the eyes of the wearer visible, has become the hot topic of conversation yet again. I've come to meet Shalina Litt, who proudly wears the niqab and explains how important it is that women have a choice in the matter. I think there's an abundance of people who don't like the niqab that are being able to go on a platform and express their view, you know, and unfortunately, you don't get that personalization. You know, if you got to know me and you realize that this was a valuable thing to me, then you might be ready to, you know, understand it. And there seems to be this misconception that here in Bolcom it's just full of lots of eco warriors, and that's just simply not true. It's full of locals, full of people from all over the country who've come down here to voice their opinion. Things here in the camp have been pretty peaceful. Everybody here is united in their movements of protest against any fracking. But past these gates here are where the company Quadrilla have started their test drilling. Nobody from the company could give us an interview today. But a Quadrilla spokesperson said they are currently drilling the 3,000 foot vertical well. They have planning and regulatory approval for this work from the Department for Energy and Climate Change, West Sussex County Council, the Environment Agency and the Health and Safety Executive. Cheap and relatively easy to make, they're the Taliban's first choice of weapon when attacking troops, without the need for hand-to-hand -hand combat. In scenes like this in combat zones all across the world, troops are scouring the floor looking for any signs of improvised explosive devices like this one here. It takes years of training for bomb disposal squads. The government says it's up to individual companies whether they allow e-cigs to be used on their premises. I went to visit some where they were catching on. I think quite a few people have sort of quit smoking or are in the process of quitting smoking and have sort of switched to e-cigs. They've got no tobacco in them, purely nicotine based. Do you see um, a lot of people smoking these? Yeah, I've actually tried them myself actually, so yeah. What do you make of them? Um, they're sort of like, I've tried a couple of brands and sort of like, uh, I do need to quit. So how likely is it that we'll ever see assisted dying allowed here in the UK? And if so, what consequences would that have for families and the medical industry? Paul Chamberlain, who's 66, suffers from motor neurone disease and wants the right to choose when to end his life. I think a lot of people would actually feel, a lot of fit, healthy people, if they were to say, look, you're going to spend five or six months pretty much as a vegetable, but with an active brain, and then you're going to die, I think a lot of people would say, well, I'd rather just not have those last few months. The economy might be showing signs of recovery, but for many of us, the cost of living has never been higher. With energy bills rising, transport fares going up, as well as the squeeze in benefit payments, families are turning to food banks more so now than ever. New research suggests that food poverty is at an all-time high. Tens of thousands are now turning up to food banks, like this one here in South London, hoping to be able to feed themselves during the festive period.